What's up? It's ironandrone.com and today I'm going to be doing uh, a little tutorial on the KK 2.15 Evo flight controller and the FlySky um, FS T6 transmitter and receiver. So um, I purchased this kit to go together kind of piecing it together and during the build we only got to hooking up the flight controller uh, I did this with my dad <clears throat> um, we just couldn't get the two to communicate correctly together and there's very very little information out there about the 2.15 Evo um, there's a lot of information out there about the 2.15 one zero in the 2.0 um, KK boards for the flight controllers, but you really can't find a whole lot for this particular one. And so when you get your receiver, if you have a FlySky FST6, and I might change mine out, um, this is the receiver that comes with it. Um, as you can see, I'll just get this a little closer. You have channels one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a battery connection. Now you have the polarity and it's hard to see on this, um, but we'll get it closer. If you look right where it says BAT, you can see a minus on the far right, a plus, and then a signal wire on the left. So that's how these are gonna line up here. So your negatives are gonna run here signals are on the far left and then your uh, positives are in the middle so when you get this board or this flight controller um, right here on the right hand side this is where your motors are going to connect into motor one motor two motor three motor four just as in this order They're coming up connecting in the board but there's just not a whole lot of information on this right hand side so where we were running into an issue is that um, we kept plugging everything into this slot number one and then going into the receiver and the channel one and it just wasn't taken. Everything was a little bit backwards. So when you get your KK 2.15 Evo board, it comes with three wires. And uh, if you're not very experienced, you're not gonna really know what to do with these three wires. So you have two wires that have three wires in here. Um, in this case, your brown is gonna be your negative. Um, your yellow is gonna be your signal and your red is going to be your positive. So you get three wires, two of them look identical, like normal servo wires. And then you get this weird wire here, which has this Medusa head looking thing on it with one wire running into uh, one pin. So this was a little confusing because there's no instructions that come with it to tell you how to hook these two together because the you know FlySky FS T6 is not related to this board. There were some other videos out there of um, people using older KK2 or KK 2.0 boards and the FlySky, but no one really ever got into the wiring very difficult to find anybody with any pictures out there uh, as far as the wiring goes so I'm gonna go ahead and just velcro this on here for viewing purposes um, so that way we can see exactly what's going on so this is the buzzer that keeps on getting in the way um, but you know don't mind that so basically what we had to do to get going is that we had to skip over this very first line so the polarity on this side of the board here is that the far right is your signal. And let me zoom in a little bit closer. Far right is your signal. Middle is your positive. Far left is your negative. So you're gonna wanna keep this in mind because when you're going in, and this is how we hooked this board up, is that we used the brown wire first and since it's only a single pin, we went into slot number two on the flight controller. And if you notice, it's on the right-hand side 
which matches up with the signal wire. Now, what we did on um, the second wire here is we took the red wire because we want to go in order of what how this is going to match up because we're going to plug this into the receiver. So we went red wire, we took the single pin, and we went into the third slot, and we went into the signal wire on the right hand side. And then on this wire here, <laughs> which is the third of the uh, Medusa head single pins, and I just called that, I don't know if it's that's the name, we took that and put that in on this single pin right there on the signal. Now, this is an important part, is that when you take this pin here on the servo wire, we're going to go into the receiver, but we're going to go vertical as opposed to horizontal. So when we go in to plug this in, we need it to match up with our channels. So channel one needs to be right here, which is the brown wire. So we're going to take this pin and we're going to put it in through channels one through three. So we're going to go ahead and stick that in there. And as you can see, we're in our signal side of the receiver and everything is matching up. So our brown goes into one, our red goes into two, and our yellow goes into three. Keep in mind is that we're skipping the very first row. I don't have an answer of why that is, but whenever we plugged into the first row of the KK 2.15 Evo board, it did absolutely nothing. It served zero purpose. Uh, the ailerons are actually on slot number two on the flight controller hooking up to the receiver. And it could just be a miscommunication between the receiver and flight controller. Not exactly sure um, just what we ran into. So now we have our two other wires here. Um, as you can see on the controller, we've used, or I'm sorry, on the receiver, we've used up three of the channels. So we have channel four, channel five, and channel six left. Well, this only came with two additional wires, so we can only have five channels uh, running in this receiver unless you got some more servo wires. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have the polarity again matched up correct. So in this case, since these wires were um, brown, red, and yellow, our brown is going to serve as our negative, And that's going to go into the far right side in slot number five. Push that in get that secure and then it's going to come around and into the receiver now we're going to go uh, vertical here so or I'm sorry horizontal so again the polarity on the receiver is backwards is that the negative is on this far right side so I'm going to twist this wire to make sure that my polarity and my negative wire are going in and we're going into slot number four or channel number four with our polarity going in on our positive i'm sorry on our negative on the very far right side so just to give you a close-up if you look here is the single here is the very first one and we're on channel four now with the last wire we're going to repeat the same process that we did and if you'll notice on the flight controller we're out of spots to put anything else in so we're going to go ahead and stick this last one in to the very last slot following the same polarity so we're going to go ahead and put this one in with our negative to the far left and then we're going to take this one over and put it into channel number five with our negative on the right side of the receiver. Now these are all hooked in to the receiver and the flight controller. 
and uh, we can demonstrate really quickly. Hopefully this thing doesn't go wild on us. We'll go ahead and we'll turn this on. And as you can see, it says safe. Let me cut back some of the light a little bit. I need to make sure all my switches are flipped up on my flight controller. Uh, otherwise it won't start. It's in safe mode, as you can see on the screen. And then if we look here, I'm gonna go ahead on the flight controller. We got power running to our receiver. So how this is all gonna power up is that your ESCs are gonna go into the power board. From your power board, you're going to solder in your power cable, which is going to connect to your battery. The power cable is going to supply power to the power board. From the power board, uh, it's going to supply power to the ESCs. The ESCs are going to run a servo back over to your flight controller, which is going to give power to the flight controller. Then from here, you have to have one wire that has three all together and that's going to carry a power signal over to your receiver so that way you have uh, power to the receiver so we're just going to go in here and we're going to go into the settings i'm going to hit menu and i'm going to go down two slots and let me try to get this a little bit closer so you can see and it's actually worth um, but we're going to go to receiver test and we're going to hit enter. So we're on receiver test. And when I'm looking at my ailerons, my elevators, everything appears to be working correctly on all my channels. So that way I know that I have them hooked up correctly. My auxiliary is working fine, which is channel 5. And uh, if I can kill this light somehow. So I'm trying to kill this light. And I wanted to give you a good view of uh, what's going on here uh, on the board itself. So if I move my throttle up, you can see the throttle is full. My elevators, or sorry, my rudders are working left, right. My elevators back forward my ailerons left right and then my auxiliary which is my uh, self-leveling is on so everything appears to be working correctly uh, hooking the wires up in that uh, configuration so i'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna power this off turn off the receiver now there are some settings that you're going to have to adjust in the flight controller itself in order to get it to work so always remember to make sure all your switches are flipped up throttle is down on the fly sky in order to be able to start it up so when i started up in order to get to the menu uh, in my situation i did have to reverse a few things here so when i set it up what i did is i went in mode select this is uh uh, model 2 helicopter and then uh, I'm going to type select and then I went into hexacopter fix pitch and then in stick mode oops in stick mode you're going to make sure you're in mode 2 if you're flying in the US so then that way you have throttle here rudders here ailerons here elevators here uh, on your controller so i'm going to go ahead and cancel that out since i already have those settings in there and i'm going to go over to the setup for the functions and for me what i had to do is i actually had to reverse some functions online so channel one uh, which was my elevators was fine my ailerons were messed up so I actually had to reverse those uh, in order to get it to work correctly as well as I had a reverse channel 4 which was my rudders um, but everything else was fine so then that way when I hit left it went left when I hit right it went right um, 
And then on the display, this will show you, you know, what channels on your sticks that they are. So channel three is my throttle. This is my rudders. This is my elevators. And this is my ailerons. And then if I go down to my auxiliary, you're gonna, oops, I'm gonna need to set this up too as well. Um, so channel five, I set this to SWD, which is this flip switch. So I can just hit that flip switch and that will send it into uh, self leveling. And then one more that you wanna make sure that you have set up correctly here too is your throttle hold. You want to make sure that this is off because if you set this as on um, and it's at 50%, once you hit this switch up here for your auto leveling to take off, it will actually take off in the air at you and hold this level uh, on the self leveling. So you want to make sure that this is off. Uh, I made that mistake where it, I hit the switch, flew back at me, crashed, broke one of the propellers off of there. So this is the FlySky FS T6, as well as the receiver and the KK 2.125 Evo board. Very limited information out there on it, um, but just wanted to give you a demonstration and show you how to set these up because it was very confusing for myself because of the three wires that it came with, the receiver, and the fact that it was uh, slot number one was not talking to channel number one on the receiver. So this is on the F450 uh, DJI Firewheel knockoff uh, kit that I purchased. Um, so I'm using all these in conjunction. They do work. Uh, so if you're looking to put something together, this board is fairly cheap. Our flight controller is fairly cheap as well as the transmitter. Uh, so you can get away with both of them for roughly around like $80. And that will get you a good portion of the way to flying. Uh, I might upgrade the flight controller in the future. It is very limited as far as the amount of channels that you can have on it. Uh, as well as there's no GPS hookups that I can tell of, uh, which would be kind of nice because this thing does fly a little bit wild. So if this video helped you out in any way, definitely give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more upcoming videos, unboxings, and flight reviews.